After the 4% drop in the markets on Tuesday, what happens next? Plus, what's happening in some other areas of the markets as well? That's coming up on 3 Minutes on Markets and Money. So on Tuesday, we had that big 4% drop. That was interesting because on Monday, the markets had broken above the 20-day moving average. It was a 90% upside day. Lots of articles coming out talking about the bullish thrust in the markets. And that really kind of pretends to further gains in the markets. Then on Wednesday, CPI data comes out hotter than expected. Markets drop 4%, a 99% down day, completely reversed the entire week's gains before that. In yesterday's three minutes video, we talked about the markets are on this rising bullish trend line and the markets needed to hold that support level. That occurred yesterday. Now, this morning, we're still going to kind of work through a little bit that Futures are a bit weak here this morning. We'll see if markets can continue to kind of hold these lows from last week. That's going to be a really important level of support here. A break of those lows, we're going to be retesting the lows back from July. Don't be overly complacent here with the markets. Been very frustrating here. Markets just continue to trade within this trading range. Um, you know, from the bottom to the top, somewhere in the middle. And again, markets not really going much of anywhere. So it's been very frustrating uh, for investors. Now, next week, we've got the FOMC coming out. They're meeting on Wednesday, talking about their 75 basis point rate hike. There is a small possibility right now of a 1% increase. Of course, what's going to be much more important is what the Fed says about inflation and whether or not they're going to continue to hike rates after this. Again, that's kind of what is widely expected here. Again, a more hawkish stance by the Fed that does potentially put these levels of markets at risk. So we'll see what happens next week, but we want to be a little bit cautious between now and then. As we talk about this market really not going much of anywhere, volatility remains very, very compressed here. Again, you take a look at the volatility index, uh, has not really gone anywhere. And even on that 4% decline on Tuesday, volatility really didn't ever leave its range. And again, has already started to tail back off here as well. So again, not a lot of concern or risk uh, concerns in the markets. Volatility remaining very suppressed here. Despite this fact this market's not going anywhere, there's not a real concern about a market crash. Investors remain very complacent overall. That is a bit of a risk here, of course, as if something does break in the markets, we could see that complacency turn into panic. And that, of course, would lead to a much sharper downside draw in markets. You know, we've talked about recently that energy prices got very overbought. We wrote some articles back in May talking about taking profits. A lot of that energy overbought condition has now been worked off. And we're getting back to being very close to getting buy signals on oil prices. Suggests that we could see a potential rally here in oil prices back up to $92, $93 a barrel. Would not be surprising here. Uh, particularly if President Biden goes through with his plans to start refilling the SPR. That'll take more stock away from crude oil supplies, and that will help lift prices as well. So again, kind of keep a watch on this. Uh, that could bode well, again, for another kind of run in energy stocks if we start to see uh, oil prices rise here. Ten-year Treasury rate, you know, that's been rising here lately because of the inflation concerns, because of what the Fed's been saying. Bond yields have run up to about 3.4 percent. We're now back into three standard deviation uh, overbought territory. The last time we were there um, was back here in June, and we saw interest rates fall from 3.4 back to about two and a half. So again, a, a reversion in interest rates here over the course of the next couple months would not be surprising. And that suggests that bonds could start to perform better here and get back into acting as a hedge for portfolios potentially against increased market volatility. So there's some opportunities in fixed income potentially uh, here in the short term. Uh, that wraps up three minutes on markets and money. Be sure to get by the website, realinvestmentadvice.com for our latest blog posts, three minutes and video, daily market commentary. It's all there for you, realinvestmentadvice.com. See you back here tomorrow.